Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today, courtesy of a loan from the Dutch Hillenberg collection, we are taking a look at a Steyr SSG-69. This is the first of Austria's properly modern sniper rifles, developed in the 1960s, of course adopted in 1969. It replaced the SSG-98K, which is effectively just a Mauser bolt-action rifle, modified and updated into a sniper configuration. That was fairly common at this time. If you look at what the British had, they had the L42A1s prior to Accuracy International. A lot of most countries out there had a service rifle accurized and pressed into a sniping role, and that's what Steyr was looking to improve upon. So the, the SSG-69 is in many ways kind of like it's a bolt-action rifle today. It's easy to look at it and just see, oh, it's it's a bolt-action rifle, it's got a barrel, scope, stock, what's the big deal? But a lot of the elements that Steyr put into this rifle when it was developed were pretty cutting-edge for the time. For example, the ABS polymer stock. Most sniper rifle stocks at that point were still wood. The use of synthetic materials like that was still a fairly uncommon thing. Of course, yes, we see it uh, in the M16 family, but there as well, that's an element that was getting stern looks from traditionalists. Uh, Steyr did a number of other things. This was their introduction of cold hammer forged barrels, which is again a, a technology that we kind of take for granted and see as normal today, but it was again pretty cutting edge for the 1960s. Uh, and then Steyr did a number of things to, to make the gun light and also as accurate as possible. They took they made a lot of decisions on the design of the receiver specifically to stiffen the entire action and keep it as accurate as possible, while making development designs and other elements of the rifle to keep it lightweight. Things like the hollow polymer stock, the plastic trigger guard, and a relatively, by today's standards, kind of a lightweight profile barrel. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. I should say this is basically the military pattern of the rifle, but this is actually a civilian one. It has a civilian stock, it has a civilian trigger pack in it. You can see the double set triggers there. That's an option that Steyr offered from the factory. The standard military configuration was a single trigger, a two-stage single trigger. The standard military configuration was a green polymer stock, not black. But Steyr offered this rifle as both its military configuration for the Austrian army as well as international export clients, and it also offered it on the civilian market at the same time. So with that aside, let's dig in a little deeper. Looking at the markings, we have Made in Austria, our serial number and proof marks up on the receiver and barrel. And then on the left side of the receiver we have the Steyr logo, their full company name, Steyr moniker, and model SSG69, that is Scharfschützengewehr, or Sharpshooter's Rifle, Sniper Rifle. And caliber on the barrel, and our importer Steyr had a, an import branch located in New Jersey. There are two elements here that are particularly distinctive to Steyr. One is the bolt, and one is the magazine. So let's start with the magazine. This uses a flush-fitting five-round magazine, but unlike typical Mauser-style magazines, this is a single-stack rotary mag. The back uh, back plate of the magazine is transparent, so you can see how many cartridges are in it, which currently is zero. Uh, I should say, of course, this was chambered for 762 by 51 millimeter NATO. Uh, it was available for civ in civilian configurations in four different, basically, receiver sizes in cartridges ranging from the 222 Remington all the way up to the 458 Win Mag. So you could basically get an SSG-69 in whatever hunting configuration you wanted. Military used this. It is a plastic magazine. So uh, Steyr having the like the, the history with the Monlicher Schonauer magazines and their rotary mags decided uh, to go with a rotary magazine for this. The magazines are also marked SSG and the caliber and a big old Steyr logo. Now I should also point out I have this rifle also has this metal trigger guard magazine well configuration. The standard stock one was plastic, and this one is designed to take double stack box magazines, or I'm sorry, single stack box magazines. So uh, we'll use this when we go out to the range, but I figured it'd be more interesting to show you the proper military version of the magazine there. The other distinctive element here is the bolt. Steyr designed this bolt to be short and fast 
to operate, where a traditional Mauser style bolt is going to have two large locking lugs up at the front of the bolt. That's going to require a 90 degree throw of the handle, and then it actually forces the bolt to be a bit longer than if you have rear mounted lugs. So as you can see here, we only have a 60 degree throw because we have six locking lugs, three uh, pairs of them, back here, and they're located at the back of the bolt. Now, Tradition would say that rear mounted locking lugs allow for a lot of compression in the bolt when you fire, and tend to be a problem for accuracy. Steyr didn't find that to actually be an issue. They went with rear mounted locking lugs because they allow the bolt to actually be shorter. If the locking lugs are mounted at the front, then you have to cycle the bolt all the way back past the locking lugs, and then far enough back to eject a case. It's going to be half an inch or so longer than a bolt where the locking lugs are at the rear, because here the first thing that's going to hit the breech face is actually the bolt face and the cartridge. So we have a little bit faster of a throw between both the length and that, that three pair of locking lug design gives you a 60 degree short bolt throw. If we look at the other design elements here, it's worth pointing out that the receiver at the front is really quite long. The barrel comes all the way back to about here inside the receiver, and that was done to stiffen the action. The idea being if you only have this much of the barrel, say, threaded in place, uh, you've got that much less control over exactly how stiff that barrel is going to be in the receiver. By sinking it much deeper, you actually get a little more stiffness. So this is about two inches of barrel that's actually inside the receiver, and that's press fit in there essentially by cooling really, really cold cooling the barrel, heating the receiver, pressing them together, and then when they return to room temperature, the barrel expands and the receiver contracts down on top of it, uh, and you get an incredibly tight fit. So basically a return to factory for rebarreling kind of fit. There is no Picatinny rail here, because the Picatinny rail hadn't been invented when the SSG-69 was developed, so Steyr put together their own scope rings. These are quick detach rings that lock into specifically uh, those cuts in the receiver. This rifle is set up with a rather nice commercial Swarovski scope. The original military ones for the Austrian army used the Kallus ZF-69, uh, it was a 6x42 power scope, 6 power by 42 millimeter objective. Uh, that was later updated to the ZF-84, about 15 years later, that was a 10 by 40 millimeter scope. The military service rifles do all have backup iron sights on them. There's the rear and there's the front sight. In the commercial world this was uh, designated the P1 pattern of uh, SSG-69. They also made a P2 pattern specifically for the civilian market that omitted the iron sights and also had a heavier profile barrel. There doesn't appear to have been a P3. P4 was a shorter, like a 16 inch barrel. I should say this is 25.6 inch overall barrel length. Uh, the P4 was a shorter 16 inch barrel that was intended for use in urban areas with a suppressor. The trigger on this one is a commercial double set trigger, that was a factory option, it was not used by the military. The military rifles will have a single two stage trigger with about a four pound pull. This two, two stage trigger can be set for anywhere from two to eight ounces, so really, really light. The idea of a, a double set trigger is you actually press the rearward trigger and it will set the action, so that sets the front trigger ready to fire, and then just basically breathing on this guy will fire it. Um, it's a way to have an incredibly light trigger with essentially an extra safety mechanism, because until you pull the rear trigger, the front trigger has a relatively heavy pull. Uh, magazine release is done simply by squeezing these two buttons on the side of the magazine, and it pulls out. And the safety is a two position one here, the rear position is safe, and the front position is fire. And in the safe position, the bolt is locked in place, and the trigger is also disabled. We can disassemble this by opening the bolt, holding down the trigger, that allows us to pull the bolt right out, and then disassembling it further requires pressing in this little button, which allows us to unlock the end piece, rotate that around, and your basically uh, the cocking piece comes off, that's got a shroud on the back to protect it, but it does have a hole there, and the firing pin does stick through, so it is 
You can tangibly tell when the rifle is cocked as well as visibly. Up here we can now pull out the firing pin and spring, and it's got this little sleeve on it as well that goes there. And then the bolt handle and locking lugs come off as a separate piece from the bolt body itself. Extractor and a plunger type ejector there. Not a whole lot really remarkable about the stock, but it does have removable spacers so that you can adjust the length of pull. And of course it does have a side mounted sling bar here, and those were both present on the military version. The SSG 69s were really generally quite well thought of. They were very accurate for their day, uh, well appreciated, and relatively light for a sniper rifle of this type. They weigh in at 4 kilograms or about 8.8 .8 pounds in essentially military configuration. So it would be the same as this, but with a single set trigger. Um, the plastic trigger guard here was done for, for reasons of reducing weight, to keep that weight down. This is probably the most common point of failure on the rifle, and it is cracking and breaking of this, especially as these rifles get older and older. So if you have one, don't over tighten the screws, they're just plastic fittings in there. Uh, crank that down too hard and you can just crack the trigger guard by doing that. Anyway, let's go ahead and reassemble this, and then I want to take it out to the range and see how I can actually shoot it. Uh, as I pointed out, we have a double set trigger here, which is something that Steyr offered, but it is not like the standard Austrian military configuration of the gun, uh, but should be interesting to shoot with. I am using a box of Eagle Eye, 175 grain, uh, half minute guaranteed. Now, that's the ammo, not the shooter, so we'll see what I can actually pull off with this. And we've got the detachable magazine trigger assembly set in it. There we go. All right, I've got a paper target at 100 yards. I'm going to start with just the regular trigger. Even without actually setting it, the front trigger is really pretty darn light and crisp. I'm shooting at our bottom bullseye on that target. Let's go ahead and do, let's do all five rounds and see what I get. This time I will set the trigger. So there's the set. Man, that is really light. And <laughs> got my hat a bit far forward for the scope. Felt like a good shot. I should point out, we have not actually, these are literally the first shots I've fired. So I think I should be able to get a pretty good group, but I have no idea where the scope is zeroed. So. Four. All right, that set trigger is literally, like, you touch it and it fires, which is the point of a double set trigger, but it's also definitely not something you would actually want on a military pattern uh, sniper rifle. That's a, that's a target shooter thing, 100%. Let's go take a look, see where I was hitting. Pro tip, don't assume that when the gun comes in, the scope will be zeroed because you see my lovely five shot group that missed the paper. I guess we should probably pull the target in, get the zero, then do a group. Good Lord. All right, there's a foot high and four inches off to the right. We're gonna give that a try. That's like a lot of clicks. Uh, we appear to be zeroed now that hit within an inch of the very center bullseye. Back at 100, now let's see what this can actually do.
Well, I pulled the last one, but shall we go check it out? All right, so that's okay. This was, in fact, my last shot. I was able to see each shot, of course, as I was shooting. This group's not bad. That one doesn't really help, but you know what? For a proper sniper rifle in the hands of someone who's not a proper sniper, not a bad performance. Certainly a very pleasant gun to shoot. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.